So this morning we've got a, a Honda BF100 VTEC and we're going to carry out a service on it. This is quite a new engine. It's the one with the serial number that starts BBMJ. This is a 1112766 and it weighs between 166 and 172 kilos. It's the BF100A. So we're going to do the gearbox now, the Impala. So I've trimmed the engine up, got a socket on there which is 27mm, I've taken the cotter pin out already and we're just going to brace it with some wood in there and then we can just crack this nut off, there we go, then we can remove the propeller, which just makes life a little bit easier and then we'll drop this lower unit off and change the impeller. So we'll just take the the castellated nut off. And then lift the prop clean off. And then we'll put the nut back on just to protect the threads from the end. Put the prop to one side. And now we can get to these bolts, two here and two on the other side. And we should be able to lower the the lower unit off to get to the Impala. So now we've got the engine trimmed up and level. I'm just going to take this Allen key head off this bolt to reveal a, a hidden bolt in there. And we'll remove this one first. Like I said, there's, the, there's two on each side. This one. There's the one on the top which does the trim tab. Now, I'm not sure whether that uh, is anything to do with holding the lower unit on, I don't think it is. So we'll take out the five bolts and we should be able to withdraw the, the gearbox. So M14 on here. Just take the second one out first. Put it on the extension for better grip. Go. That's the centre one out. Now we'll do. Uh, we've got that centre M14. Now we've got two on each side. We'll remove them, and the lower unit should pull out. It's a spline shifter, so there's no linkages to remove. That's the top one there. I was on about. It's a rubber bung bolt there. It's outside the case and for, for the joint, and I believe that's just for the trim tab. So we're not going to not going to touch that one. So we'll do the four bolts on the sides. And that should be the lower unit coming out. So we'll just slacken each one off, just so we know they're going to come out. Three. And that's number four. So now we'll take we'll take two of these out on this side, and then we'll do the other side. And what I like to do is I like when I do the last one, you always just leave a bit of a thread on with it exposed, so we can knock it back the lower unit just to see. There's number one out just to see if it is drawn out. So it's a bit tedious taking these bolts out. It's quite a fine thread on them, but they're not too bad. There's just not much access for your fingers. I'll just show you what I mean. So we've, we've taken this one out, just withdrawn this one, and then we've got the exact same on the other side to do. All the bolts are the same size as well. So we're going to leave the top one, which is here, for last. Which just makes it easier. So as you can see there, I gave it a tap and the joint is growing all the way around. We should be good to go.
that joint's opened up really well now. See daylight through it. And as we know we've got all the It's just this last one. There we go, nice and easy, one, two, three, four, five bolts, there's the shift, the shafts go up there, and there it is, removed, I'm just laying it down for now, and there's the impeller housing which we're going to change now, so there it is, there's the, the lower unit in the bench, four bolts to remove, M12s, and the housing will slide up and off and I've got the new new impeller and gaskets to put in. So the first job is we'll take all four of these bolts off. I believe they're all the same size but we'll whiz them out and then I'll show you what we're dealing with after that. So that's all four bolts out and now we can just lift off. That's the cover. The impeller cup. Has the impeller in it, which will lay out here so we know which way they came out. Look at the wear plate, there's a key, it's the drive key that drives the impeller. Some spline, uh, some dowels for locating, and there's a few gaskets underneath, so we'll, we'll, we'll take them out as well, um, and then we'll see what we've got in the kit. So just looking at the old impeller and there doesn't appear to be any sort of substantial wear on it at all. It looks pretty much brand new apart from the, the deformation of the, the veins. So yeah, that could have probably gone another year but better be changed now than not at all. So no concern there with the old impeller. So that's the wear plate lifted off and we've got a, a gasket underneath which we'll just pop up as well, just pop it off those dowels, that comes off the shaft, there we go, and there's the sort of the, the intake underneath, nice and clean, there's no, uh, no build up of any sediment salt on there at all, small bit on the on the impeller there but nothing to worry about. So the first thing in the kit is the, the gasket which just goes straight over. And that aligns with the two dowels. That's perfect. So with the dowels, it only goes on one way. Now on top of that, I'm going to put the wear plate, which again only goes on one way. So here we go. Here's the the wear plate. These are all genuine Honda parts. And that sits on there. So now the impeller rides on this plate. So the next thing to do, we've got the impeller and the wear key. Uh, sorry, not the wear key, the impeller and the uh, the woodruff key, which sits in that flat recess. That that that's the the shaft grips the uh, the impeller and drives it. Otherwise, it'll just spin. The the drive shaft would spin. The impeller would sit still. So it's very imperative that this part locates with the impeller. It's got the new impeller here and the key in my hand. As you can see, the impeller only go on in one way because there's a there's a there's a notch cut out on that face there, just at the top, 12 o'clock position, and underneath there isn't. So if you put it in sort of this side going down, we wouldn't be able to slip the woodruff key in. So put it in with that notch open, and that's where it'll sit. And then we'll we'll put the the key in. See if I can do this one-handed. Just check whether so it's there keys in, the impeller comes down, Let's see if we can just align this one handed, there we go, and a quick little test there, you see the, the impeller's now locked to the shaft, never reuse the old ones, I mean that's a, that's a substantial key, probably wouldn't fail, but some of them are little cams, little pins, that they do, they do, 
they do wear out, become deformed, and the impeller can slip. So it's always good to use brand new when you can. We've got the impeller housing, which is original. The new impeller cup and o-ring. So the first thing is to do is to remove the old ring out of that recess and we'll fit the new one and then we'll pop the cup in. Um, but it's pretty self-explanatory. Yeah, you have to undo this all to remove it. So putting it back together, it's just the reverse of that. So that's the new o-ring in. Now for the cup. The cup will only go in one way. If you try and put it in the wrong way, it doesn't sit properly. So that like turn down edge sits in there and there's two little locking tabs that lock it in position. And now we will slip this down the shaft and push it onto and over the impeller. So just before I do that, I always spray a bit of lubricating spray in. Now I know people will say that's the wrong way of doing it, you don't push it over the top, but that's how I've always done it. And it's, I've never had a failed impeller. If, you, if it was an old impeller, then yeah, make sure it's in the right orientation, but I've never had an issue. Just a firm push over the top, just like that. And that's it done. Now the four bolts go in and complete. That's how we do it. One, two, three, four. A bit of grease on the bolts so they don't bind up again. And that's it. That's the impeller replacement. Also then we've got to put it back into the into the engine and I'll fill on that as well. Okay, we're gonna go for the reinstallation now. I'll put a bit of grease on the drive shaft. And just a case of offering it up. Make sure that the spline goes into the, the shifter. There's a few little dowels to locate as well. And that's it in. Put the bolts to hand. We should put one in first just to secure it. There we go, as you can see. In. Just got to be the four to do now. And that's the lower unit secured back on. So I'll do that off camera because there's no point me showing you, but remember it's just one, two, same on the other side, and we've got one in there as well. That one you don't have to touch, that's just for the trim tab, which is already aligned, and then we've got to put the prop back on. So we have it, that's the lower unit back on, the impeller's been changed. One, two, three, four, five bolts refitted. So now we'll lower it back down, and we're going to do the gearbox oil and then refit the prop. And that's the, the service carried out on this BF100A.